Let's go indeed. Hello, shortless guys. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Plugin Along, a stream dedicated to Lotro plugins. Last time on Plugin Along, we dug into why Titan Bar wasn't tracking reputation losses. We worked our way through a tangle of the obscure variable names and confused variable reuse, and we made it work for the Gladroom. And I was super happy. And then after the stream, I discovered that it was not quite working for uh, in league and ale association. And today we'll see what was missing, the missing piece of the puzzle, and then move on to trying to add badges of taste and dishonor to the Titan bar currencies. As always, feel free to jump into chat with your thoughts and questions. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and pull up Titan Bar and look at what we're talking about here. Um, all right, so here we are in Brie overlooking this cool little fountain. Uh, I don't know why it's here, but it looks neat. And uh, we are going to go ahead and load up our plugin manager and go ahead and load Titan Bar. Now, Titan Bar in its default configuration here, does not have the uh, rep reputation. We'll go ahead and add that in. And let's see, it doesn't have the wallet. We'll go ahead and add that in for later. Now, uh, on the reputation, if you left click it, you get the reputation window. And in this reputation window, we can go ahead and add in Galadrum, for instance. Uh, but we could also go ahead and actually go ahead and track the in-link by left-clicking it, uh, doing the checkbox. We have added it to this uh, hover over. Uh, and AL Association. What? Yeah, say that. And the AL Association. Click that. It shows up here. So what was happening uh, to make the tracking of losses? Oh, that's funny. I don't remember checking that. What was happening uh, to go wrong? Well, let me pull up our source control. Now, if you're not familiar with them, source control lets you take snapshots of changes along the way, uh, similar to, uh, but in a more formalized way than you might have for final project, final project two, final project two, really, this one for sure. Uh, and these snapshots are organized in a chronological manner. So let's go take a look. Here I've got my source control for the changes I'm making to Titan Bar. And we can see the snapshots. The first one is just the current version that's out there, 1.36.24, which was released October 18. And then the changes, or a boiled down version of the changes that we made on uh, stream. <laughs> Exo says, no need to call out my word document naming scheme like that. Uh, we've all been there, we've all been there. Now, you can actually use source control to track things like Word documents, but Word documents um, in their current conception are treated a lot like binary files, and it's hard for source control to do anything other than just say, okay, well, here is all of it, here is all of it, whereas with text files, we can get uh, just what's different. So instead of the whole thing is different, we can see only these two lines change, and that's really valuable from a source control perspective. Now, if you use an intermediary language, like Markdown or something, to write your documents, and then at the very last second convert it over to Word documents, then you can store the whole thing uh, in a source control repository, which would have made college me's mind blown, but that's a, that's a different direction for source control. Uh, so what did we do? We added um, just a localization element so we could detect whether the reputation change was increased or decreased. Thanks, little redhead. Yes, get ready for Gundabad with the Lotro Quest 2021 code. Definitely, if you haven't done that on any or all of your accounts, you should remember to do that. It's only good for another month. What's the other thing we did? Well, I just realized that, aha, I wasn't fully sharing the screen. Okay, so we added, um, Here's what's there in the initial uh, Titan bar uh, that's available out there. In our changes from last week, we added the text decreased so that we can localize that to each uh, locale. Uh, and then, well, that's a little hard to see. Let's go ahead and pop that. Oh, that's a little much. Let's bring that down. There we go. We did a couple things. First of all, we realized 
that the reputation part of Titan Bar was looking at all chat, not just the advancement channel. So a little bit of a bug could lead to some wacky hijinks. So we'll slap a fix in there for that. Now we'll only look in the advancement channel. Sweet. Uh, and here's where we capture not just increased messages, but increased or decreased. And by using a capture group, we can know which one it was. Same thing here. Uh, increased was increased, well, anything really, but we're only going to see increased or decreased in this context. Um, now, again, those are the English patterns. This will not work out of the box for French or German. Not speaking French or German, I wasn't feeling confident in fixing that, but hopefully a uh, French or uh, German speaker can follow the lead on this. Okay, so we then capture off, is it increasing or decreasing? If it is decreasing, we just invert those points. That was great. That worked great for Gladrum. We tested it, we saw it working. Uh, we, we shot a couple of uh, protected elk in the forest and Titan Bar correctly saw our reputation go down. So what was wrong? Well, that's the second part that I, <laughs> I went ahead and fixed that in the meantime because I've been doing a lot of in-league and association and I needed this to work on my machine at least. Uh, so I got to test it out a lot. So what, what's the final bit? So there was already code that we saw. Uh, there was already code in there. Is this any better? No, it's fine. Uh, there was already code to handle negative value changes. And it even knew enough to say, oh, if we've hit zero, then we need to go down to the next rank if um, standing, if there is one. Oh, you're at zero of ally. Okay, we should knock you down to friend, start you at the top and keep going. But the code for how to handle those special factions, factions like in League or Ale Association, where you start at, um, at enemy, factions uh, that do weird things. And it turns out it um, was trying to add one to a oddly named is new r negative variable. Still not sure what that was trying to capture. Should have been minus one. And then that variable should have been used in the lookup for what's the maximum value of the new standing. So what was happening is I was dropping down from Kindred for in-league or ale association. Uh, in-league probably, that's the, that's the good one. So I was Kindred with them. And it was looking up, and instead of looking up, oh, your new max is 25,000, it was seeing, oh, your new max is 45,000. It was going up from Kindred instead of down from Kindred. Um, plus one instead of minus one. So, quick little change. Well, I say quick. It took a little while to convince myself this was the right change, but it, uh, it does work at least for those two factions. Um, and so when we would do a release, uh, hopefully at the end of today's stream, this will be a part of that. We'll release a patch and then um, when that gets uh, incorporated back into the main line of Titan Bar, there won't be any need for it. But until then, you can just use this patch as a way to get these features. Then hopefully Daryl will be, will be able to incorporate them. All right. That was a whirlwind tour of <laughs> what happened since last week. Uh, so that's where we were. We have the ability to detect reputation losses. So Ale Association, Inly, Galadrum, these factions where it's uh, easy or part of the normal cycle to lose reputation, gain reputation, lose reputation, gain reputation. Now Titan Bar can play along and keep track of that. Awesome. Coupled with um, Duriel's, uh, in a recent release, uh, a fix for the factions that have accented characters in them, Wardens of Anuminas, Rangers of Esteldine, uh, coupled with it properly tracking those, this is super exciting for my reputation track. I'm, I'm very happy to have that in there. So, um, what do we have? That was that. Now, what's the other thing uh, that I use this for besides reputation during festivals? I track currencies. And so, for instance, um, Figment of Splendor. Figments of Splendor. I should probably be tracking that because I'm almost at the max. The max is 10,000. I've got 9,900. I'm just going to put that there as a reminder that I should spend that. Right? Um, if I've got uh, bingo badges, you know, uh, that's not actually a festival thing, but it's another example of a, of a thing you can track. In this case, harvest, nope, fall. All festival tokens, excellent. Let's definitely show that on the Titan Bar. Uh, I have very few of them, I need more of those. So this is a thing that I find really useful for Titan Bar. Titan Bar is all about 
popping information up that you care about right now. So for instance, I don't care about my backpack info, so we'll just hide that. Uh, I don't care about my uh, equipment information, and, I'm not and durability is just not a thing I care about right now. So I uh, will slide that out of the way. So Titan Bar is just about presenting what you want to see and nothing else, right? And so things I care about during festivals also include in the Ganale Association reward currencies. And those currencies are the badges of taste and dishonor. So when I look up badges, I have bingo badges, badges of dishonor, badges and taste. Why do I care about those? Well, among other things, you can turn in two badges of dishonor or two badges of taste for a box of festival currencies. And that's that wild box that you can open up and pick up 10 fall festivals or six farmer's fair or whatever. And so it's very useful to have a stockpile of these which have no cap and then you get to the end of the festival and you're like, oh, I am 500 tokens short. All right, well, trade a bunch of these in, open a bunch of them. It's gonna take a, a few minutes to go through them all. But for every box that I get, that's 10 fall festival tokens. Uh, and so for, if I have, um, what do we have? Almost 40, we'll call it 40 for right now. That's basically 20 boxes or 200 tokens for each factions. 400 fall festival tokens, awesome. That's a, a big boost for whatever it is that I still need to buy. So I like to track these, but they are not in the currency system for Titan Bar. Now, there are two reasons why. Either no one's added them yet, or for some reason they are unaddable. I'm hoping it's just the former. I'm hoping just no one's added them yet, that we can go ahead and, and uh, get in there, add them, and they'll be there for everyone, but especially me. Draw the Sky would like to rename them Badgers of Dishonor. Or is just proposing that all badgers are dishonorable. I could I could be convinced either way. Yes, I will avoid singing the badger, 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 badger song, but Little Redhead can get it started. Welcome, Blade. Okay, so that's the setup for what we want to do today. Now, the current maintainer of Titan Bar, because it has changed hands over uh, the years, uh, Let's see, let me actually bring up the lotrointerface.com website. Bring it on over here. And let's do a search for Titan Bar. Now this is actually a little confusing if you just go search for Titan Bar because people say Titan Bar is great, they are not wrong. You come here and you're like, oh, there's six of those. Fun. Well, go ahead and just do a sort by date. You'll find the newest one down here is being maintained by Duriel who took it over from Technical 13, who took it over from Thorondor, who took it over from Habna. Uh, so this is the one that we are concerned with. So Duriel, when they took it over, uh, made up a very handy guide for how to add currencies in Titan Bar, presumably for their own uh, sanity. Uh, but also, we're going to be able to take advantage of it today. Submit a patch, and hopefully they can just roll that in, and they don't have to do the work themselves. So that being said, let's fire up an explorer window to get ourselves into documents. Lord of the Rings Online, we're going to go into plugins. And then in here, we're looking at Habna plugins. Now, this is just the name of the first person who put it out there. Every maintainer since then has left it in Habna plugins so that their updates, if you already had Titan Bar, just get installed normally. That's very convenient. Nice backwards compatibility. Uh, within that, we have Titan Bar, and out here, though, there is a README. Now, let's go ahead and open that up with your text editor of choice. I'm going to use Sublime Text today. Let's see. All right, here's a nice little uh, history, like I said. Uh, originally created by Habna, log, uh, then Th Throndor, then Technical 13, then Duriel. Thank you, Duriel. Uh, feel free to download and tinker with the code. I don't mind that if I do. All right, so I know I saw a how-to. So let's dig around and see if we can see. Titan Bar Maintenance, that sounds great, or Titan Bar. Well, that's open, but both of them. Titan Bar, okay, feature enhancements. Interesting, I should probably look at that at some point. Uh, and known issues and limitations. Neat. 
um, D tracker D tracker actually got its location tracking inspired by how uh, Titan Bar does it. I think I added some uh, a little refinements here and there, but the basic idea is you monitor your chat channel changes, and when you change regional chat channels, I'm in the Bree Town chat channel, for instance, uh, then your plugin can know where you are as well. Now. I, I said, I'm in the Bree Town regional chat channel, not the Bree Land regional chat channel, which is a little something. Uh, so let's see. Let me uh, bring this up here. You can see that I entered the Bree Town regional chat channel. Uh, Bree Town has its own chat channel, apparently, that is separate from the Bree Land chat channel that I would enter as soon as I leave town. Uh, there are just a few places, I think Thorns Hall might be one of them, uh, that have a sub-regional chat channel. And there's one or two uh, regions that share chat channels, which may be an oversight, it's hard to tell. Uh, but in Ravanian, I believe uh, Wells of Langflood and, Gunda, uh, and Elder Slade both share the same regional chat channel, at least last time I checked. Um, so you can't always know where you are based on the chat channel, but it's, it's a start, right? Um, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and create a new tab and bring that up here so we can look at standard. And that's probably all we need there. Okay. Just in case uh, we have a plugin start dumping uh, error messages at us, we'll be able to see those. We'll go ahead and um, rename that to standard. Actually, let's go ahead and throw error in there too because uh, those will be important to know. Okay, so um, that being said, uh, we'll go ahead and not worry about that so much. Here's the Titan Bar maintenance. You can download the newest version. I haven't actually checked GitHub. It's possible they've made uh, some changes, you know, not to derail myself completely, but any commits in the last week? Nope, okay, good. Didn't want, to, didn't want to worry about colliding with them. All right. So um, this is, was a new file that was added, like I said, when Duriel took over. So uh, I think it's a really valuable source of, hey, this is a complicated system, but if you want to add a part to it, you should, you should follow these steps at the very least. So adding a new reputation faction, awesome. Adding a new currency, I'll be back to you. Um, Da, da, da. <laughs> uh, adding a new control and some sample stuff down here. Awesome. So good. Oh, and uh, if you're dealing with other languages, um, I found out the hard way, says uh, I think Duriel, that the commands you use to load and unload plugins depend on the language of the client. Uh, this is absolutely true. So in English, you can use slash plugins load, but in German, you do not do that. You use this and in French, I assume it is not pronounced charger, but I, I would like to think it is. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so uh, currency, that's what we want. Add a new currency. In fact, there's a lot going on here. I'm gonna go ahead and co just copy this into a new file so I can kind of check things off as we go. So, this is, this is sort of my goal for the next hour or so, is to walk through this step for Badge of Taste, Badge of Dishonor, and if we could get around to it, festivity tokens, because festivity tokens are another one of those things where uh, they're important to keep track of because they are capped at 40. Um, those, you get those from running the uh, seasonal instances, so Thrang, I think, um, um, Perfect Picnic, uh, the Yule battle thing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the Red Maid now. Uh, so if we come on in here to the, uh, ah, these big bases, Perfect Picnic and Battle of Frost Bluff are at least available uh, to my not quite level 50 character. Uh, and so festivity tokens are really cool, but when I come in here to currency, fest, I don't see festivity. So if we could add that too, even better. Okay, so. That's that's sort of my, my goal here is to walk through this and just do what it says and see see if it works. Now, I'll want a window side by side while I'm doing this. So I'm gonna pop open a new text window and in here we're just gonna start doing the things.
All right, so we need to add the names to the localization files. Now, the first question is, are these names in singular or plural? Um, and to answer that, I'm just gonna copy an existing example, like those fall festival tokens. If, if that says tokens, I'll just do badges and we'll see how that works. So let's come in here and see if we can find, okay, locale. Uh, we'll start with the English. And again, uh, we could log in with the client in French, German. I'll probably do that off stream because switching uh, clients requires exiting completely, going back to the launcher. Um, but that's that's sort of a lesser concern right now. So um, let's find fall festival. Oh, hey. Fall festival token. These are your fall festival tokens. All right, figments of splendor, embers of enchantment. Oh, okay. Let's go back to the wallet. Fall festival tokens. But if I hover over it, False Festival Token. Okay, awesome. Uh, and so if I get badges, um, if I hover over that, it is a badge of dishonor and a badge of taste. All right. Um, let's see, is there an obvious place to insert this in? What do we have? Wallet and currency. Wotro, Mithril, Yule. Well, it is under festival and events. What do we have? Festivals have been through a lot of things. But before instances and skirmishes, if these are organized that way. Hmm. I'm not convinced these are organized that way. Okay, we'll just add them here at the bottom for now. Uh, in league slash ale association. So L is the localization uh, lookup table. And where you want that to be Oops, go ahead and hide some of those. Uh, we want that to be badge of now we'll start with in league taste. Now we need a name for this. Now, as I mentioned last week, I don't necessarily always agree with the naming convention used in Titan Bar, but Far more important than agreeing with it is following it. If I'm making changes, I want them to blend in. I want it uh, so that if someone comes in the future, they only have to learn one coding convention to read this document, not two or three or seven. You don't want a bunch of different people injecting their own opinions of how the code should look. Whether or not the code should look like this, it does look like this. And so that question has been answered. That's the coding convention we're gonna follow. And so let's take a look. Uh, modes of enchantment. Uh, it looks like um, looks like we have money modes of enchantment. Maybe uh, is that the M prefix? It does seem like that. So money badge of taste. That seems like a thing. And if we're going to be using that kind of naming convention, we just want to do a quick search and make sure we're not colliding with something else. So I'm gonna do a recursive search here in Titan Bar and just look for mbot, great. The thing that we just put in is the only place it exists. Uh, so badge of taste and then language for the badge of taste hover equals, um, because I'm guessing, yep, okay, when you hover over the number, you get these are your blah. And that's the hover text. So that's what the H is oops, in this context. Now, same thing, we'll do a quick little sanity check. Well, that is indeed the word both, isn't it? We're gonna call that a side effect of the convention, but the convention uh, is maintained here. So these are your badges of taste. Perfect. The other is, money or something, a uh, badge of dishonor. And let's again, double check that that's not already in use. We're good. Make sure we spell honor with the U, got it. All right, 
And again, badge of dishonor hover equals, these are your badges of dishonor. Cool. Now, same thing. We're gonna do a global check for this. And we see it's not in use either. So uh, we are not going to confuse Titan Bar by using the same uh, prefix for two different things. Awesome. Ideally, like I said, we would have this in French and German as well. But to start, we just need it in the English uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, so let's pull up our handy dandy list. Add text names to uh, the localization files. Right, well, we have, we have, we've added to one of them and that's okay. Uh, actually, I'm gonna add the to-do list over here. For one thing, my fellowship member has gone link lost. That's distressing. Um, and we'll just go ahead because we're not, we're not looking at the whole thing yet. Uh, and that'll give me a, a little bit more space to widen this up, uh, both, both of these. Okay, so um, now they've got uh, some nesting going on here. These, uh, these dashes are um, kind of giving that impression of a nested list, awesome. So uh, search for the wallet uh, currency controls. Okay, <laughs> they're describing what we just did, awesome. Uh, and add the new currency to the end of the existing list. Well, that's what we did. Neat. For the abbreviation, you need two for each currency. Oh, they told us what we were trying to do here. If only I'd read uh, to the end of the paragraph. Uh, the first one starts with an M, and normally the first letter of each word in the currency. That's what we deduced. The second one starts normally with the first letter of each word in the name of the currency, and then an H. Check if it's already been used. We did that. <laughs> and then the name behind the first abbreviation has to exactly uh, batch the name in the game, and most of the time sing singular, other times it won't work. Perfect. All right, so we did all that, uh, and we're done with the language part of things. I'll leave that file open. We'll come back to that if we need to reference those prefixes. Next, add currency in main.lua. Don't mind if I do. All right, so let's come back in to main.lua, and they say search for wallet order. That's creative. Um, and add the next number to the array. Let's do that. Uh, in this case, we're adding two numbers. So um, my mind is boggling. Okay. Uh, and then search for player align equals one and add the abbreviation to the menu item array. Okay. Um, player alignment here in this case, I believe is free peoples versus uh, monsters for PVMP. Uh, and so Titan Bar is just sort of protecting itself from populating your, your wallet if you are an orc. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but that is what I believe. Okay, so we can see the order in which things here. In fact, if I were to go ahead and pull up this window, we will probably see some similarity. That's the reputation window, sorry. Uh, so we have Money, Commendation, uh, Destiny Points, Lotra Points, Mithra Coins, awesome. Motes of Enchantments, or Mimos for short. Figments of Splendor, Embers of Enchantment. So we can see that this is that, uh, that order right there. Awesome. Uh, everything's expected there. Uh, festivals and Events. Uh, and then Item and Events. So it's MSP, where is that? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Okay, so Yule Tokens is there. Oh, shards, nice. So that is a question. These are festival and event items. Would they be at the beginning, end of the list, um, in the list in alphabetical order? Anniversary, fall, from residence. I mean, it's currently in alphabetical order, but I feel like conceptually they are both the same and kind of outside of the festivals. So my instinct would be put them after the Yule Festival token, um, come back later if I don't like it. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and just in league and ale association. Uh, and so again, we're just going to use those language codes that we created before. And that's why I kept this open, so I did not have to remember. All right. So, uh, badges of taste and badges of dishonor. Great. Was that it? Well, that's 
probably sufficient to get this showing up in game. In fact, let's go ahead and pause right there. Let's do a read load of Titan Bar and see what happens. Well, Titan Bar came back and if I click on the currencies, we can see that window is not quite tall enough. Uh, probably should have a scroll bar in there, but it's just tall enough, yeah? Nope, it needs to be a little bit taller. Um, so, we should probably have a to-do list here. To-do, uh, add uh, badges of taste, add badges of dishonor, uh, just size a wallet window, or make currency area scrollable. Oops, scrollable. Now, just making the window taller is a little bit faster. We can just do it real fast and, and move on. But I think the correct answer is make that window ad adjustable by height and give the content a scroll bar. And that, that way, even if it's not tall enough, you can still scroll around in there. That's, uh, that might be a little bit harder depending on how um, readable the UI code is. So we'll, we'll put a pin in that. It's on our to-do list. Okay, but we can see that we do have badge of taste and badge of dishonor in the list, but we haven't done any of the work to make it uh, work. So if I were to start clicking on it, um, we could try to put it on the Titan bar. And that just... Uh, doesn't do anything because it doesn't know how to do that. So that's fair. Uh, and then if I were to badge a taste, put it on the tooltip instead, then when I hover over here, it still doesn't know what to do with that. Cool. Totally expected. So let's continue on with the list here. We need to add a currency file in the control directory. Do that, they recommend copying an existing working currency. Uh, they confess to mostly just using anniversary token. They change the name of the file to the name of the new currency. Uh, they replace everything which is connected with the old currency, abbreviation name comments with the new one. They use the replace all function of notepad plus plus. Excellent, the less typing a human does, the less mistakes a human does. Well, let's take a look at that. Let's go into the control directory now, the software engineer in me says that if we're copying a file and changing a few things out, that is, there's a structural problem with the design of this system. This should probably be a few entries into an array. Uh, you know, we should add, uh, be adding to an array that is dynamically just generating these things. We, we shouldn't be creating a whole new file. But, um, that the, shifting away from the current system, if it is in fact as suspicious as it sounds, is, is a much bigger task than just copy the file, paste it, and, and keep doing it. And, and so this problem persists. If it is a problem, let's take a look. Let's open up this anniversary token that they use. All right, so anniversary token. Actually, let me compare that to, say, the Fall Festival token. I'm really in... What? No. I'm, I'm interested in how it differs. Neat. Okay. So, um, a thing that we can do is to go ahead and... Oh, we can see that Fall Festival token was added by Durial. Awesome. Uh, one thing we can do with your better file comparison utilities is to say, yes, but I don't care about that thing. So if we come in rules, let's add some unimportant text. I don't care about LAT. Okay. Uh, and for that matter, I don't care about uh, FFT. Um, because if those are the only changes, um, Fine, that's easy enough, but I want to see what else changed besides just the name of the entry. Uh, so something, anniversary token, fall festival token. What's the L stand for, I wonder? That's okay. So fall festival, not much different. In fact, let's uh, get rid of those minor changes now. Cool, okay. 
So we can see that we have specific values for the RGB and alpha for the background color of this thing. Interesting. Or they can be uh, uh, customizable. Uh, we have the, oh, OK. We, we have a different uh, icon. We'll have to see if we can hunt that down. For right now, we can use any old icon. Um, all right, we change the name of the function, change the name of the function. The tooltip, uh, we're calling that. OK, that's different. These things, nice, 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 nice. OK, uh, that seems pretty straightforward. So that gives us a sense uh, of what has changed between two working currencies, and we can use that as a model as well. I'm going to slide that over here, but I'm going to keep it around. I'm not going to close it fully. OK, that being said, Fall Festival token looks like it's working great. So we're going to go ahead and copy that, paste it in, and we'll go ahead and call it a badge of paste. And let's come in and see what we can do. All right, badge of taste written by D4. Um, all right, so what do we have? We have this entry. Now, as they said, if you're using a um, something that supports multi-select or uh, replacing all, you could theoretically come in here and instead of FFT, we might want to have BOT. Now, nope, don't change things. Don't change things. It really feels like these should have a, some sort of a prefix like currency or something, but uh, it's okay. Uh, that is not a problem for today. So, uh, we can go ahead and just globally replace uh, FFT of uh, Fall Festival token or Fast Fourier Transform, of course, uh, with BOT. And that's a, that's a start. Um, let's sneak back in, though, to those instructions. Copy that. Change the name of the file. Done. Change the name of the file. No spaces between words. Cool. Badge of taste. Replace everything which is connected to the old currency. Everything. Um, all right. So that's where I might go ahead and pull this back in. So what else has changed besides that? Actually, you know, I'm going to be a little bit less strict. I just do not care about LAT versus FFT. OK, what else has changed? Oh, well, the comment. That's a good point. <clears throat> so this is the badge of taste table in G. Nice. OK. There's another comment here. All right, obviously I should do that. Badge of taste. More comment. The background. Oh, OK. <clears throat> Excuse me. So. Wallet item. What is that? Where is that? I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and find it. <laughs> settings dot. Where did I get settings? No, wallet item. Okay. I didn't find it off, off a very quick um, look. So I just figured I'd come in here. Wallet. No. Of course. So let's do a search for wallet item. Sweet, here we go. In TB, Titan Bar Resources.lua, uh, in the core Titan Bar folder. Excellent. So we can see here that the wallet item, this is just a lookup for icons. Um, now, finding that icon, there are ways to do it. Uh, I believe if you have the icon, you can use a, a plugin to go look at the item details, uh, including the icon. Uh, so I am going to dig into that maybe a little bit later. But for now, uh, we can just go ahead and reuse the Fall Festival token and just make a note to come back and fix that. Cool. All right, fix icons. 
is four currencies. Done. Okay, so that's cool. That's a reminder. Uh, and then the settings dot. Oh, okay, so we will want to go ahead and change the settings entry as well. Settings dot. So anywhere that where we see this fall festival token. Oh, there's three of them. What's the other one? Okay, so also there. So here we'll go ahead and say badge of taste. And badge of taste. Excellent. So those are the main things. Uh, if it wasn't just that prefix, FFT, getting changed over to BOT, then those were the other things. Now, we can go ahead and glance through here. Uh, but this is what I'm talking about. There, there's a function here that is, nothing is changing. The only thing that's changing is the thing that's look, that, that we're looking at. This should not be written once for every control. This should be written once, and then you just customize which control it's looking at by passing in a parameter um, something. Uh, and so if one wanted to kind of um, improve Titan Bar in a, in a way that doesn't affect the UI at all, but maybe makes the, the whole thing a little bit faster to load, a little bit easier to maintain, that's the thing that I would want to do is, is coalesce all of these different currencies into a single thing and then it, they just behave, you know, they act on a different currency's data structure. That's not a, not a today problem. It's just a thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and check this out. We have ball. We still have the currency to, uh, icon to work with. No more FOTs. Uh, and then, yes, we know about moving, moving, clicking down, up. Tooltip. Yep. Well, everything is looking fine right now. We'll go ahead and call that good. Now, we do need to go ahead and, as well as badge of taste, we need badge of dishonor. So we'll go ahead and fix that up here. So again, instead of badge of taste, it's B-O-D. And then, uh, let's see, taste. Oh, we can do uh, test. Excellent. Well, all those places that say uh, badge of test, we should probably go fix that. Excellent. Taste and taste. Okay, just those two. Not too embarrassing. All right, so badge of taste. We're going to go ahead and do a global replace on that. It's just going to be badge of dishonor. Sweet. So again, do a quick search for taste. These two badges of taste here. Uh, we're just going to go ahead, dishonor. Get really good at spelling dishonor here. And there's no more taste less left in the file. So at this point, I think uh, we have two side-by-side -side new files, one for badges of taste and one for badges of dishonor. Uh, awesome. So we're done with that one. We've added the new control files. Again, in an ideal world, we would just add an entry to a table somewhere, but uh, that's a problem for future someone. Okay. Next up. What's the next thing we do? Add currency in TB resources dot Lua. Okay. In fact, I think we were just in there. TB resources. Or more correctly, add the image of the currency. <laughs> well, as we just saw, in fact, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, badge of taste, badge of dishonor. Okay. So, let's go ahead and fix that. We're going to go ahead and say... Badge of taste, save that, and badge of dishonor. And we'll go ahead and add entries into the TV resources. We'll just um, set them to an in, you know, incorrect value. Uh, that way we'll have something. Okay, so in TV resources, they say uh, search for a G wallet item. Excellent. 
And in here, are these in the same order? It really doesn't seem like they are. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and add them at the end here. Uh, so, um, badge of taste equals icon equals something. We'll come back to that. And then badge of dishonor equals, and then again, icon equals something. So copy the last entry in the array, paste it as the last entry, add a comma after the second last entry. <laughs> right, so uh, you need to make sure you have commas after each one. A comma here, I think Lua will tolerate it, um, but it does need comma separations here. Uh, replace the name of the last entry with a new currency, replace the text value with a new icon. If you don't know the value, scroll down to Hello World plugin. Oh, neat. Well, hey, maybe I should read these things. All right. Hello world, I needed the icons for some of the new currencies. After much frustration, I found a way to get them with a second plugin, creatively named Hello World. It lists all currencies with their icon and image number that you have in your wallet. Fantastic. Okay, so open the following path. Let's do it. Use profile, documents, Lord of the Rings Online, plugins, create a new folder with the name Duriel. Don't mind if I do. Okay. Open that. Create a new file with the name this. Can do. And if it's X file, do make sure to get rid of that .txt at the end. It will not work without it. And we'll go ahead and create hello world. Open that folder. The complete path should be there. Create a file with main. All right. And .lua. Awesome. Now, do these things. This one is the plugin, uh, dot plugin uh, information. Sweet. And here is the main.lua information. Awesome. And we can see just what's going on here. Uh, he's got the print function that he's defining, or they, I should say. Uh, they get a, a handle to the local instance of the player. They get the player's wallet. They get the size. They uh, it, uh, iterate through the wallet from one to the size of the wallet. And they just go ahead and get that information. Sweet. Let's do it. So we're already in Lutra. So we're going to need to go ahead and hit the refresh here. And then we have Hello World. Let's load that sucker up. Awesome. Look at all that helpful information. All right, so what we're specifically looking for, of course, are badges of taste, image number, this thing. Let's go ahead and select all of it and come back in to TP resource. So badge of taste, um, this was not a hex number. <laughs> Open a hex converter of your choice. I'm not convinced you actually need a hex converter here, but it is nice to be consistent. And so if we paste that number that we got into a calculator here, uh, actually that's uh, using the Windows calculator, we go to programmer mode instead. We can paste it in and we just get the hex value right here. And we can copy that on out badge of taste zero X here. And now we can see it's very similar to the other ones. It starts with a four one that convinces me that we have a good number. All right, that was badges of taste. Uh, badges of dishonor. There we go. So copy that out. Same thing. We're going to come back in to uh, decimal mode. We're going to paste that in, go into hex mode, and copy it out. Awesome. Again, the hex value starts with 4-1. That convinces me that we're uh, in the, the, the correct uh, number space here. Neat. All right. Well, thank you very much, Duriel. That saved me from having to do essentially the same thing later on. Uh, now, ideally, that's going to give us that badge of dishonor and that badge of taste look to it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and read the rest of this because he's got some. Uh, they've got some really good information here. Um, find the currency. Open hacks. Paste. Uh, all right. Yeah. yeah, 
and they point out we don't actually need it anymore. That's fair. All right, and it's unloaded. Sweet. Well, that was cool. All right, so we've gone ahead and added the currency into TB resources. That was so much easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, for each point after this, search through the files, and every time the existing currencies are listed, add in the new currencies. This is what I'm talking about. The fact that there's not a single centralized place that they are all looking at is just blowing my mind, and I'm not going to fix it. I'm just going to make it work uh, the way that all the rest of them are for right now. That is a much bigger change than I'm looking to do right now. So, but they do helpfully point out where we're going. So, functions.lua. Now, um, uh, fast for your transfer, no, fall festival tokens. Here we go. Um, okay, so we can see over on the side here, we have a couple here, one, a couple there, and then some more, some more, and some more. So we're gonna wanna address each of those entries and do something similar. All right. Is there any reason not to do it at the end? I'm not sure what order these are in. But we'll just go ahead and copy this. And then spring, midsummer, ancient script. Awesome. Before this final end, we're going to head and paste and paste. So. If to show, we have badge of taste, badge of taste, and then da, 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 da. okay, and then that's the BOTH. Is it? I mean, it must be. What on earth is the rest of that? Okay, I will hope that the rest of that is not a problem. Oh, of course, it's using the text, these are your blah, blah, blahs. Yes. And badge of dishonor. Badge of dishonor. Okay. There we go. Badge of dishonor. Oh, yes, the badge of dishonor hover, the badge of taste hover. Yes, that looks correct. Okay, so FFT. Okay, it looks like we need to provide an update function. So after this ancient script, let's go ahead and paste. We'll just paste one in for right now. Update badge of taste currency on Titan bar. Okay, update. Badge of taste. So we still have your team. What do we have? That, that, this, this. Okay, does that look reasonable? Sure. And let's go ahead and Duplicate that for the badge of dishonor. So dishonor, update badge of dishonor. Now I'm not sure where this function is being called yet, but we will get there. All right, badge of dishonor, badge of dishonor, badge of dishonor, badge of dishonor, all the way down. So if we do a search for bot, Oops. Uh, then we can see no more. We're good. Okay. So searching again for FFT uh, because we just did the, um, yep, the very first one. We did the update function. Now we're doing this. So two more here. If show badge of taste. If show badge of dishonor, then bot and bod. Set back color that. Okay. Cool. Moving on. Uh, 
Badge of taste. Badge of dishonor. And then, my goodness. Okay, and then what I think is the final chunk of uh, code to duplicate. So we have uh, badger to saw, no, badger taste. I do like uh, starting with that one. All right, we'll make sure that that was enough to paste over. But first, I'll go ahead and finish doing this copy paste. Uh, copy paste. All right, so set stretch mode, set position, get left, get width, icon, get left, icon side, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, nothing else looks like it needs to be changed here. And then finally, is that enough? We've wrapped around to the top, we can see we do have something there. Uh, we have the update functions for badge of taste, badge of dishonor. And we have if, badge of taste, badge of dishonor, BOT, BOD, and then finally here. Okay, that feels like we've done everything we were going to do in functions.lua. Awesome. Now, functions control.lua. And I got to say, as annoying this, as this is, rediscovering how to do it would have been so much worse. So again, big props and thank you to Duriel for documenting all of this. Um, having a path to follow makes this much, much easier. Then I just have to worry about making typos uh, and I don't have to worry about actually, you know, f figuring out how to do it. Okay, FFT. Excellent. Let's go ahead and we keep on adding it after the ancient script. That seems fine. So what's going on? We have badge of taste. Go ahead and update the uh, comment here, badge of taste. And go ahead and start pasting in that value. And we'll go ahead and say badge of taste. Okay, so uh, badge of taste where, import, um, and that, that's where we're getting the uh, actual file that we declared earlier, badge of taste.lua. Badge of taste, control, set position. Okay, cool. And then finally, badge of taste where, it's not equal three, then update. Ah. Badge of taste. Neat. That's what that function gets called. Same thing, badge of dishonor. Let's go ahead, badge of dishonor. And then that badge of dishonor. And then finally update badge of dishonor. Now again, oops, we should be able to just make sure that that function was one of the ones that we did. We can see it there in functions.lua, so we're good to go there. Same thing, update badge of taste. Excellent. Okay, is that the only place where FFT shows up? No, of course not. That's okay. Um, let's go ahead and pop that down here for badge of taste and badge of dishonor and show badge of taste, then update badge of taste. And again, this is the kind of thing where I feel like we should be iterating through an array and we should not be manually writing these checks, but, uh, that's a design decision for future. Little Redhead says, I keep saying FFT and I'm hearing free to first tell. That's fair, that's fair. Uh, Fast Fourier Transform is perhaps less Lotro specific, um, at least in the chat community. If I could figure out a way to give a badge of taste 
And look at that, I did it again, badge of TAST. I should probably just do a search for TAST space. Phew. Okay, nothing else has crept in. All right, so badge of dishonor. Then update badge of dishonor. Okay, well, that's good. Now, I'm very curious how Titan Bard then goes ahead and tracks whether you're spending or acquiring these things. Uh, but at the very least, it can load the value when you log in. So that's cool. Okay, let's look up more FFTs. All right, are we back to the beginning? We are back to the beginning. We already have done the BOT and the BOD here. Excellent. That's all for functions, uh, CTR, control, I'm assuming. Functions menu control. Excellent. Show fall festival tokens. We'll go ahead and add in these here. If show badge of taste, past, badge of dishonor. Same thing, badge of taste, badge of dishonor. And then show hide badge of taste. Show hide. Now, I know show hide, badge of taste, show hide, badge of dishonor don't exist yet, so I do want to mentally make a note that those should exist before I'm done with this process. If they don't exist, uh, that will be a, um, a thing to worry me. That being said, it's probably later on here. All right, same thing, oops. We're gonna go ahead and copy that line. Come on in here, badge of taste. Badge. Show, hide, badge. Now we can go ahead and use autocomplete to stop writing test. And badge of dishonor, there we go. So FFT, what else? Well, here's where we accidentally closed the file. That's delightful. Okay, uh, here's where we are splitting apart um, uh, currency specific values, or not um, splitting apart, but using currency specific values for the thing that we're doing right now is what it looks like. So, better taste, better designer, and same thing. I'm just going to do some control paste. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Well, we have. a long control block that seems to be setting things up. Let's go ahead and copy that in and see if it makes sense. So we have badge of taste alpha, red, background, background red, background green, background blue equals the thing that we're working with right now. And if show badge of taste, then badge of taste, set back color to those things. Same thing, badge of dishonor, alpha, background red, background green, background blue equals the current things. And if show badge of dishonor, then badge of dishonor is control setback color to those things. Okay, so we're saving off those values in two different locations. And that to me is also one of those things that's like, a, why are we doing that? But it's entirely possible that these values get serialized out to file instead of going back to the control. Uh, and so this is just making it save proof. We don't have to do anything special later on. The saving just grabs those values. That's what I'm hoping is the case. Okay, looks like we've got another block here. So, badge of taste. And yeah, we'll just do a little selection here. Uh, oops. So, paste. If 
for the alpha, red, green, and blue. Looks like a very similar code to what we just had, which again is one of those things is why is this code in two different places? Why is it not a function that does it? Not sure. But it's one of those things that I think about as I'm looking at this is, is this simplifiable? Where are the things that we're doing the same thing over and over? All right, so badge of dishonor, badge of taste, both of those look like they're there. Uh, so if we do a search for FFT, we can just kind of uh, ment uh, visually confirm we have badge of taste, badge of dishonor, badge of taste, badge of dishonor, BOT, BOD, BOT, BOD, and BOT, BOD. All right, function many control, done. Um, and then, Functions menu. My goodness, there are a lot of functions in Titan Bar. If nothing else, this helps appreciate the scope of what Titan Bar um, makes available. All right, show hide festival fall. Oh, hey, here's that function. So we're going to go ahead and copy this function, scroll on down to here, and go ahead and add. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll go ahead and add both of them at the same time. Why not? Show hide badge of taste and show hide badge of dishonor. So here we're just going to go ahead and adapt these copy pasted functions based off of, again, name replacing. So show fall festival token. In fact, let me just highlight fall festival token here. And those are things I want to make sure I uh, replace. So show badge of taste uh, is not the current value. So we're just inverting it. So when this function is called, it just toggles yes, no, yes, no. Settings dot. Uh, oh, V. Okay. So V might be visible. That's good to remember. That's a thing. Oh, we've got an FFT. So we're going to replace that VOT. Awesome. All right, import control, BOT. If show as a taste, then but set can, all right, we're gonna do that here. Replace the FFT. All right, and then finally, BOT control, set visual, visual, and then the final paste. Awesome. So that's the first function. Again, we're going to do that for the same one here. So first of all, badge of dishonor. We're going to replace here. And, and if I wanted to be a little bit uh, faster, we can go ahead and do a replace, 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 replace. And be careful to stop there because we don't want to keep replacing. Same thing, uh, FFT, we want to change to BOD. We'll go ahead and replace, 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 and that. Let's stop right there because we get into the real function. We don't want to break that one. Excellent. Let's check that that was the only thing in this function um, file, I should say. Excellent. All right, add the currency in settings.lua. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, neat. Uh, that's all sorts of stuff. All right, starting from the top. Oh, my goodness. So this whole block looks like it's fall festival token related. So let's go ahead and copy that on down. Just before the save settings here. And here, I'm actually going to do a different trick here. So I've pasted the block into its own file here. And here I can definitely go ahead and just find all fall festival tokens in this file because it's just the function I care about or the block of code. And we're gonna go ahead and say badge of taste. And then we're gonna find FFT, find all of those, BOT. And we can go ahead and convince ourselves that's all of it. So bring that back in. 
That's the badge of taste. And glancing over visually, just to make sure we haven't done something that just uh, doesn't look quite right. Looks good. Same thing, we're gonna go ahead and do badge of dishonor. So once you have convinced yourself that you're, the process you're doing, the manual process that you're doing feels pretty good, you can start uh, getting some uh, automation techniques like this. So uh, find all the FFTs, replace it with BOD, and we're good, badge of dishonor. Okay, so that being said, uh, that looks like the first section of here. Let's find the next. All right, we have settings dot fall festival token, excellent. We're gonna come down here after ancient script and get ready for both of these. So same thing, badge of taste and search for that FFT as well, BOD. My mistake, BOT. That would result in some oddities, wouldn't it? All right, and then second, we're gonna do the same thing, but this is a badge of dishonor. And then the FFT will be the BOD. All right. Now, there's a show fall festival token here. That did not get done. I must have misdone my keyboard uh, shortcut. That's okay. That's why we do a visual here. So we have the badge of taste, show badge of taste, uh, alpha, red, green, blue, location, where, all of that looks great. But that does make me think I should come up here, make sure I didn't do something else. All right, we do have show badge of taste, show badge of dishonor, that's good. All right, so next FFT. All right, we have a really large block of code for reset settings. All right, well, we do wanna make sure a reset is available. So same thing, let's go ahead and we have fall festival token is badge of taste and then FFT is BOT. And then for badge of taste control. All right, that looks pretty good. Same thing though, we wanna go come on in here for badge of dishonor. And we'll go ahead and do a multi-select badge of dishonor and fix that comment. Okay, so badge of dishonor, badge of taste, those have been added in there. Looks like I can move on to the next one. Just making sure, I'm kind of uh, switching back and forth between FFT and fall, just to make sure I don't miss something. All right, so we have a section here for fall festival tokens. Let's go ahead and Modify that. Old location x equals setting is dot. We have a fall festival token. Great badge of taste. Uh, old screen width, and we have another FFT. Awesome. Screen width settings badge of taste. Dot badge of taste. Dot width and dot. That looks great. It looks very formulaic. It looks like again something that when we're doing this much copy pasting is as a code smell that there's probably a better way to do it. All right, badge of dishonor. But sometimes, I mean, with code that works, even if it's a little ugly, how often do we really add new currencies into Lord of the Rings Online? I mean, there, there's a question of how much effort is it worth to restructure a system that really, this happens how many times a year? Once, twice? How much effort would it take to refactor the system into a, a little bit more elegance? 
Uh, there's a real question of time trade-off. This takes one person an hour to add a couple of currencies once a year. That's, that's hard to optimize any further. One, one hour a year is pretty cheap, uh, especially when uh, we're volunteers. Uh, okay, so we have Badge of Dishonor. We have an FFT here. Beauty. All right. Da -da. And, oh. Okay, that's the second time. What's going on here with the Fall Festival token? All right, Badge of Dishonor, BOD, everything's looking much better. Uh, do a search for FFT, none, search for fall, none, we're good. Paste that in there. Space it out like the other ones. And so again, like I mentioned earlier, uh, this should look identical to the other stuff that I'm editing in. My goal isn't to change things up, to shake things up, to be exciting. My goal is for this to flow naturally. If someone's looking from here to here to here, there should be no change in how it is written. It should just flow because it's much easier to adapt to this one weird way of writing code than two or three or seven. So even though I might prefer to say, you know what, this, this should actually be old location. <laughs> it's gotta be, it's gotta match. Alf Wine says, it makes me feel as if don't repeat yourself dry was not followed originally. Um, you know, who can, who can say? Like, I haven't looked back into the old code. I don't know how far back this particular structure goes, but you know, the volunteers who make plugins aren't always professional coders. And even if they are, they're doing this on their time off. So I'm not expecting like the highest quality polished code. I certainly don't uh, necessarily always put out the same uh, that, that level of quality in my own plugins. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, the thing is, how many currencies were there when Titan Bar came out in 2014, right? Like seven years ago? I'm guessing a lot fewer that they were interested in tracking. And so if there were just two or three uh, currencies, it can be really hard to tell how much effort should I put into abstracting this so I can just have a, a nice simple list versus how, you know, are the currencies gonna be different? Are we going to have to have custom code for each one as they come in? Is this gonna be uh, biting us if we try to consolidate it all and then this new type of currency comes in and it needs all the special stuff? Uh, or perhaps they did need special stuff back in the day. Uh, and, and so at a certain point, it's like, oh, that's a problem for later. Oh, that's a problem for later. And then that maintainer disappears and that problem for later maybe just never happens, right? So, you know, at each step of the way, same thing what I'm doing now, like as you're adding a currency, changing the entire architecture of the system or just get the currency added so people can track their badges, right? Like one of those is objectively correct and it's not overhauling the system. <laughs> at, each step of, of, at each step of the way, overhauling the system is not the correct answer for the specific goal of getting a currency in there. And yet it leads to us having a couple dozen currencies and a lot of repetition. So, um, you know, there, there, there's there's a time and a place and the, the place and the time are, are not right now, but there's some time. <laughs> um, so, Doriel, if you ever wanna to work on refactoring this code, so maybe it's a little bit more uh, one one set of code that, that manages a list of n currencies, we should talk. Just just hit me up sometime. Maybe I can help. Um, but yeah, it, it makes me wonder when I look at this code. Anyhow, settings. Uh, so we were looking at the FFT section here. We have the badge of taste. We have the badge of dishonor. Awesome. So we were at the bottom of the file. We've popped back up to the top of the file. That suggests to me that we are done in this file, or at least, uh, fingers crossed, we're done. All right, add currency in FRM options. I'm gonna uh, say that's probably form options. Uh, it's hard to tell. I mean, that, that is a problem with abbreviations. Uh, Hapna. <laughs> like, was, was the letter O just stuck on your keyboard? No, it's there in options. 
<laughs> Exo says, we'll admit, every time I've added a feature to Aura's, I've wound up revamping half the system. Good fun. Yeah, it can be, it can be. Um, and when a, a plugin is first coming along, that can be kind of an ideal time to play around with these big changes, right? Like, um, you know, you're in beta right now. If you break something, uh, oh well, right? Uh, now, not right now, like, I don't know. If, if, if we do a quick check, Titan Bar, the original one had 217,000 downloads. Durials has 26,000. The one before Durials has 158,000, uh, but had been around for, for longer. Like, that's a lot of people to inconvenience if your fix just like, oh, it doesn't work anymore, sorry. <laughs> Now's the time to move fast and break things, to paraphrase Facebook's um, terrible motto for a grown-up company. Hmm. Alphine says, well, lots of programs I've seen that use Windows Forms use FRM as a prefix for the Windows Form. That's... That, that, that could very well be where this comes from. And it just boggles my mind as someone whose O button does work, why you wouldn't just type F-O-R-M. Um, because F-O-R-M, for someone looking at the code uh, who's not familiar with the domain, it's like, is that form? Is that format? Is that from? Uh, and yeah, if you're, if you're really familiar with the domain, and, and it's like, oh, obviously it's form. But is it obvious? I mean, well, we have to start at scratch when we're first getting into this. And I feel like making the variables cryptic just to save a letter is just like, what's the trade-off there? We have autocomplete for a reason. One extra character is just, it doesn't feel worth it to me. Okay. Let's move my soapbox away and keep on moving. So, maybe we got an FFT here. Let's go ahead and change that to BOT. And then fall, we've got a fall festival token, and we'll change that to badge of taste. Awesome. So if badge of taste is not equals nil, then wallet control badge of taste equals show high badge uh, control. Uh, awesome. So we can go ahead and follow it up with this badge of dishonor. And then same thing, fall festival token badge of dishonor. On or okay. Uh, let's go ahead and paste that in, and we're good. We can go ahead and confirm that's the only one there. Oh wow, that is quite the font list. Neat. Okay, um, so that was form options. Now form main. All right. Let's come on in here. We have FFT. We can see that happening in two different places. Okay. Uh, and that looks like if the where seems to be um, don't show or show as the, the hover or show as an icon on uh, Titan Bar. So I believe three is the icons actually on Titan Bar. So we need to load the control so it can be moved around. Uh, so with that being said, Badge of taste, badge of dishonor, and then badge of taste, badge of dishonor. And again, this is this is the thing that kills me. You can you can uh, construct these names right. Like this could just as easily be um, bod where. Uh, at which point it's just bod concatenated with a where. At which point. BOD is the name of the currency in an array that you're uh, iterating through, and then, ah, uh, okay, stop that. Continue. <laughs> and same thing here. We're gonna go ahead and get a badge of taste and badge of dishonor. Um, interesting. What is this function doing? Checked if the wallet size has changed. Fascinating. Hmm. Well, I don't know why it's needing to do that, but we'll assume that it does. Uh, but that's all for form main. If we come in to background, 
then we go ahead and search for the FF key. And we get this. And here I'm gonna take advantage of the global replacing again. So we're gonna search for all FFT and get the badge of taste. And we'll search for FFT and get badge of dishonor. Excellent. Any other? Holy moly. Yes, there are. What's going on here? Update background variable. All right. So, same thing. Take advantage of your multi select or your find all, uh, find and replace all. And uh, go ahead and replace the badge of taste. And FFT, badge of dishonor. All right. Whoops. So same thing here. We've got the FFT. So we're gonna go ahead and BOT, badge of taste. Everything looks good there. And same thing here. Badge of dishonor. Okay. Excellent. Now we can actually see where the, I think shards, uh, only use two characters. Uh, you start getting some visual misalignment here as each each time it iterates, you're, uh, you're losing a space. Uh, so having them all be three characters wide does have the advantage that you get a lot of nice columns going on, uh, even if those columns maybe shouldn't be there in the first place. Uh, but as long as they are, uh, this is a, a very satisfying uh, block of code here. Uh, because they're all the same length. When you jump up to three, uh, at least those are a different but similar column shape. All right, so that's the background. Anything else in here? That seems to be it. All right. Wallet tooltip. What is, oh, in the controls directory. Thank you very much. So the wallet tooltip, well, let's see what's in here. Okay, so we're gonna do a similar thing. Let's come in and, and take a look. We have MFTT. We're gonna replace the FFT with the badge of taste. Do we need anything else? No, oh, yes. The icon is coded here, badge of taste. That feels like that should be stored elsewhere, but Go ahead and again, match what's currently here. We have the badge of uh, dishonor and the badge of dishonor. Okay. So I would describe this as a fragile system because the amount of mistakes I could possibly make along the ways to adding a single currency, let alone doing two at once like I'm doing. Um, the number of places where I could misspell something or just miss something, uh, there's a lot of them. And that makes us a, a, a fragile operation, a, a fragile update. Uh, it, it's not very robust. There's, there's not a lot of cross-checking that's going on within the code. There's just me, the human, making sure I don't make any mistakes. And if I do make mistakes, something's not going to work. And the nature of Titan Bar is the thing that's not going to work, it doesn't not work when you load, it not works when you try to use it later. So there could be a hidden bug in Titan Bar for a currency that only um, crashes when you try to put that currency on the bar, or when you try to use it as a tooltip, or when you spend the currency, or when you buy, uh, get the currency, that kind of thing. And so you might not realize there's a bug until later because, well, I'm not doing in league. I'm just adding this because a friend wants it or something. Actually, I am doing in league though. Uh, so um, the fragility of this update also is kind of a code smell where we're like, eh, there's a lot to go wrong in this process. Uh, okay, wallet window is the final place we're gonna, oh, no, we should make sure. Oh, okay, it was just the one place here. So wallet window. 
And well, a window, I would guess, is the thing that we want to make bigger too. So we want to keep that in our head as well as a place to come back to. Okay, so we have FFT. And there is another place. So after we get done with the first one here, we're going to circle back around. All right, so we have FFT, so BOT, badge of taste, and then fall festival token, uh, badge of taste. Okay, so that's a thing. So badge of taste, where badge of taste, sell the badge of taste, show high badge of taste, show high badge of taste, show high badge of taste. Oh, this is actually um, a previous bug that I did find. Oh, what were we doing? Midsummer, maybe? Maybe spring festival. Um, one of these show hide badges was show, um, because there's a variable called show badge of taste, which is the are we showing it. And then there's a function show hide badge of taste, uh, which is the actual toggle that thing and, you know, make it show or hide it. And, you know, super easy if you just, whoops, now, now you're doing a completely different thing. And that will crash because you're trying to uh, use a Boolean as a function. But... It'll only crash at the time that you try to do it, not when you load Titan Bar. It's a it's a runtime bug, not a a, a, a load time or a compile time bug. Okay, um, and finally over here we have badge of dishonor. So badge of dishonor, excellent. Let's check out that other FFT down here. So we have FFT, we just want to replace the badge of taste, and the comment, badge of taste. Now, it's not commented every time you use BOT, but there are a lot of comments in here about what we're trying to do, and I do appreciate that. Badge of dishonor. Now, it's even nicer when the code itself is feels obvious enough where a comment would just be restating the code. Um, but short of that, comments are great. All right. So if that equals that, then that, yes. So was that everything? We have an FFT, badge of honor, badge of taste. Yep. FFT, badge of taste, badge of dishonor. OK. Well, that's all the places we were told to go update things. Uh, so the big question is, uh, is that enough? Does it work? Yeah, let's find out. So let's go ahead and reload Titan Bar. And first of all, we can see that Badger Taste and Badger Dishonor are both in this list. So if I right click it, I can say um, it's currently don't show. So let's make one of them on Titan Bar, and then Badge of Dishonor, let's go ahead and make in tooltip. So we can see one of them over here, we have a control. Uh, if I hover over it, these are your badges of taste. Hold left click to move, right click to open the control, nice. Uh, oh, control menu. Okay, so I can drag that around. And if I hover over currencies, we can see the badges of dishonor icon, which is really faint actually, but it's like a, a gr dark gray talisman on a black background. Um, those dwarves do not want you to know who you're messing with. Uh, and we can see I have 39 of those as well. And that's consistent with my wallet display. Uh, now, let's go ahead and talk, um, swap those. So we have badge of taste in the tooltip and the badge of dishonor on Titan Bar because there's different code for whether you're in the tooltip or on the bar. And if you don't remember to test in both of those, again, the code doesn't execute until you try to do it. So you do want to have the actual um, currency in both locations to make sure you go through all of those possibilities. Now we can see we have 39 here. Uh, and if I hover over here, 39 of the batches of taste. That's so cool. Uh, I do actually want batches of taste uh, up on the Titan bar as well, though. Okay, so we can go ahead and uh, put those next to each other. Now, the next big question is if I acquire Badges of Taste or Dishonor, or if I spend them, will this update? Because that would be lovely. 
And so my next goal is to do just that. Uh, now, the first thing is I am in Brie, which does not have a place to spend or acquire either of those. So I will say goodbye to this lovely fountain and head over to Western Brie Gate, where I will hopefully meet a handy hunter who will take me to Thorns Hall, where the Ale Association is headquartered. And there we can go ahead and, oh, cool, auction sold. There we can go ahead and spend a badge of dishonor and see if this number updates. That'd be delightful. Excellent. We're also trying to work through these uh, spider legs, so very convenient. So, you can use this door just to the side of the main door to Thorns Hall, and then turn around, come on back through here, and that's a shortcut into the Thorns Hall Inn. Otherwise, you can also just run down from inside Thorns Hall. During the festival, you can also crack open a geode. Oh, that was a medium one. Two fall festival tokens, excellent. And then the Ale Association Acquaintance Trader. So, the Inn League is where you get the jig, and this is where you get Deluxe Stink Bombs, which I just have no need of. So instead, the box of festival tokens, I can acquire one for two of these tokens. Let's do it. Oh, it worked. It worked. Titan Bar updated. I've got 37. That's so cool. Now, this is why I really like um, In League and Ale Association. Not only is it an amusing thing, and you can knock it out in 20 or 25 minutes with a hunter and some milestones, uh, but... Those batches of Taste and Dishonor give you boxes of festival tokens, which again are wild. You just crack them open when you need them, and suddenly you've got another 10 Fall Festival tokens, or 12 Farmer's Fair, or 12 Yule, which uh, is coming up. Um, and so that is just very useful to me. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up, get those 10 uh, Fall Festival tokens. Uh, very cool. So these batches of Taste and Dishonor are going to power up my fall festival tokens to make sure I can complete my consume consumable deeds because, oh my goodness, getting 300 of each of those uh, seven is, uh, takes over 1,200 or so uh, tokens. All right, and so we, we've just had to spending dishonor, and in order to spend uh, uh, badges of taste, we'll need to be in Mickle Delving. Now, Mickle Delving is on the route, so... Um, we could do the whole thing here real quickly. Uh, why not? So, if you're not familiar, um, the Ale Association quests, you have to pick up and then go to the appropriate bartender throughout Eriador, uh, who will then give you a fixed drink that is meant to replace what the In League is actually looking for. So, haha, this looks like swill, but it's actually a fine red or something. So the first thing you do is pick up those quests, so you can then come talk to each of the innkeepers. Uh, the first one is here in Thorns Hall Inn. So we now must bring the fake Thistlebelly Brew to Wald Mugwort. Wald Mugwort is down in Oast Hare in the Lone Lands, and of course if you have a hunter, they can just find that campsite fire which saves minutes of travel across land from Oost Gurth. All right, so what I'm looking for here is each of the turn-ins here should increase my uh, badges of taste by one. So when I talk to Wald Mugwort, I finish this, I should get a badge of dishonor. Bam, 38. And then talk to Wald Mugwort again, pick up a quest, which is very handy. You only have to have up to 11 Quest slots free in your quest log, not all 22. And then we turn this in for a badge of taste. Oh, so good. Um, now, this is where Titan Bar really shines because if you do things right, it just works. And I don't know how it's tracking the chat log for you spent it, you, you've received it. Um, it's already doing that and it's doing that great. So that is just delightful. Whoops. Probably didn't mean to dismount there. So, um, like I said, you're picking up the fixed drinks and then you're dropping them off. We only have picked up one fixed drink right now, but there's two more available in the Prancing Pony. We'll just dash over there 
uh, and grab those. Now this isn't strictly plugin related, but uh, sometimes when you're doing plugins, you gotta test them. And in this case, this is gonna be a very thorough testing. Um, and we can also see that my reputation for the ALO session in the in league is not correct. So we'll go ahead and pull up the reputation window so I can adjust that. And then we can see that those numbers are going up and down correctly as well. So, Father Man Butterbur has two of the quests here. Excellent. And then if you do type in LE, that's good for in league and ale association, as Little Red had found out for me. Uh, so if we come on here, we can go ahead and do the same thing. But I do need to be careful to be ready to travel. Oh, haha. My mistake, we're supposed to be using a milestone. Where are those things? I'm so used to having the travel window, and I don't right now. Yeah. Hmm? That's so weird. Yeah, but where are they? Oh, that's, yeah, that, I am so used to the travel window, I am just, I am at a loss without it. Hang on a sec. Plugin compendium. I'm not saying this game is unplayable without plugins, but I'm just saying I really like plugins. So travel window two, delightful. Thank you, Hulse. All right, install complete. Once we're in Dooland, we're just gonna scoot on up to Thrassi's Lodge. All right, so, oops. In the plugin manager, if we uh, go ahead and do a refresh, we have the travel window two. We're gonna load that up. So it says breaking news. Man does not have plugin addiction. He can totally stop at any time. Like I said, they're just very, very, very useful. All right. Excellent. I have my travel window. I have my travel window where I need it. All right. Ale Association is at Ally and is actually at 2100 right now. So we're going to save that. And the in league also ally. We've been making good progress this uh, festival because I think we only just started during the uh, harvest math. Hello Top Cat. Welcome to chat. In League is currently 4700. We are testing some changes with Titan Bar. I've just added badges of taste and badges of dishonor into Titan Bar. And so we're doing a quick little In League Ale Association run to get more of those because they're so useful and also to test the changes for reputation losses. Topcat says, servers are still up. Yes, Lotro has been around for a long time and it is still going strong. Does Stoneborn still exist? You know, that is an interesting question. It's not a server that I play on if it does exist. Um, and let's see if I can just pull up a list right here. I do not see that in the list. So, coming on over here, Two Year, Gladden, Shadowfax, Crick Hollow, Landerval, Brandywine, Anor, Laurelin, Arkenstone, Evernight, Belagir, Saranen, and Gwaihir are the servers in uh, action right now. There were some server consolidations a while back where many of the servers got consolidated together. Hmm, Blade really likes Palantir. Palantir 3 as well. It feels weird if you don't see it when you're in combat. I have heard about that. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, as a minstrel, I mostly just look at my mini raid boxes if I'm in um, group content where I'm actually healing and the rest of the time I'm just screaming at the enemies and uh, I, I would not call myself like a serious end game raider or anything. All right. Just gonna ride out and up here to Thornley's worksite and drop off this fake Lumail's vintage. Okay, but we did just go ahead and drop off um, quests. Now each of these quests is giving us 900 reputation with one and losing us 500 reputation with the other. But if you do both of them, then you get a net 400 with each. And so what we should see is that 
I'm now at 2,500 instead of 2,100 with the AL Association. Yep. And 51 instead of 47. Perfect. So Titan Bar is seeing those losses um, just like we were hoping for with last week's changes. And if we go to our wallet, we can see Badges of Taste, Badges of Dishonor. Those are in sync here as well. So it's seeing those gains as well. And we'll go ahead, into when we're in Mickle Devin, Nickel Delving will stop by the Bird and Baby, uh, both for one of the Ale Association quests, but also, have I gone the wrong way? But also to stop in with the In League and spend at least one of those badges of taste as well to confirm that it, uh, Titan Bar has seen those go down as well as up. All right, 41, 42. Oh, it's so cool when it works. So that's kind of a lot of what I wanted to do today. So um, while I'm following Rosenblum around the Shire, which we will be coming up to shortly, um, it might be time, ugh, I'm already mounted. Uh, it might be time to go over to source control and take a look at what did we actually change and take a snapshot of that. So we could release a patch of all of our changes out to the community. Now my hope is that Duria will take these changes and roll them into the main line for Titan Bar so that anyone who downloads Titan Bar automatically has these changes. That's kind of the, the ideal here. But just in case they're busy, they might not get to it for a few weeks or a few months, it'll still be out there. Anyone can download the patch and have these new features we've been, we've been working on. And that'll, that'll work in the meantime. Take me the Forsaken in, obviously. So uh, let's navigate the Forsaken Inn here. And then uh, there's some traveling in the Shire and that'll give us a few seconds to dip in and out of the game. Uh, hopefully Little Redhead doesn't mind us being on follow. The In League vendors i think are in the burden babies so that won't take us too far off of our route okay oh hey there's people here who might not be immune to spiders aha excellent okay so we're gonna go ahead and oh that's still a hunter Apparently, a hundred years, mickle was a more common word that meant like big or greater. So you have little delving and bigger delving. Uh, but that is not a word that I'm familiar with in American English of the 2000s. So it, it just uh, reads as a misspelling of Michael. And I have to, well, it's a lot more natural now. But when I was first playing the game, I had to really correct myself. It's not, it's not Michael delving, it's mickle delving. Uh, and that was pro would probably be easier if that word were more in common use than it is. All right, so here's the door. If you're at least friend with the Inley, you can walk on in here. You can come talk to the Inley trader. Make sure you get your ancient tome, which teaches you how to jig. And also you can buy a box of festival tokens. Now that takes two. That should bring me down to 40 on Titan Bar. Yes. All right, so we can confirm Yes, I want those fall festival tokens. We can confirm that Titan Bar is correctly seeing increases and decreases of both badges of taste and badges of dishonor. That is so satisfying. Uh, but in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and use our milestone. No, we got rid of those. Trestle Bridge. For a while we had milestones in Hobbiton by water, uh, which is very handy both for festivals and for this run. Uh, it shaves about 45 seconds of cross country travel off, but Trestle Bridge is also annoying to get to, and we were just about to get into Wildwood, and then I came down to the stomach flu and, you know, life. Okay, so she's going to guide us across uh, country. Let's go over to Source Control and take a look at what's happened. Local changes. 15, is that all? So, this is delightful. This is the set of changes it takes to add currencies. Now, if I were a more cautious person, I might try to break out these uh, chain sets into just badge of taste and just badge of uh, honor, but I, 
or dishonor, but I don't think so. I think it's all going in as one. Um, but we can see the, the the new control, badge of dishonor, badge of taste. We can see the wallet tooltips, one entry for each. each. Wallet window, we can see uh, new entries here, new entries here, new locales in English only right now. But again, that's something we could follow up with, log in with a uh, French and German client and use that Hello World program to spit those out. Um, at least the badge of taste and badge of dishonor. Uh, make a note in my other to-do item. Okay, oh, we're done with that. Um, okay, let's see, to-do. Fix like it, that's done. Oh, I just lost that, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, get French and German translations for badges. Cool. Can use hello world to make copy pasteable. Cool. Okay, so we will not forget that. Oh, Topcat said, I played on Snowborn. I played from the start of the game. What about the life pass? Oh, nice investment. I wonder if my account still exists. It should. Uh, do give it a try. It's possible that uh, you will want to contact customer support. Um, and Little Redhead has just pasted the information for that. Thank you very much. Uh, but in general, the accounts were not deleted. Now, um, if your characters were on a server that no longer exists, um, you may want to start from scratch. But uh, you are in time to check out the Treebeard server. If, you're, if you like slowly released content, the Treebeard server is currently up to level 50, just the base game, essentially. Uh, and in January, Moria will come out, and then the new uh, releases about every six months after that. If you're looking for faster releases, Shadowfax is already way, way ahead. Uh, and of course, the live servers are up to level 130. Um, and so yes, Mordor is out in general, but not on all of the uh, legendary servers. It's out on live and well beyond. Um, uh, Anor is well past Mordor. I believe uh, Shadowfax is not there yet, but it'll be soon at its rate. <laughs> Bladehawk has pointed out, you should have a lot of Lotra points uh, built up because I believe the lifetime um, subscribers do get um, monthly, annual, something, uh, gifts of Lotra points uh, as part of that. Um, and that should definitely allow you to uh, buy up um, all sorts of uh, extra goodies like carry-alls. Um, all right, I'm going to divert, divert here for a second to the Lotro store. Um, a new introduction, since you've last played, most likely, is the idea of a crafting carry-all. Certainly not game-changing, uh, but come on, store, you can do it. Certainly not game changing, but definitely very nice for inventory management. A large crafting carryall has is, is a bag within a bag. It has 50 spots, and each of the spots can store up to 5,000 of the same thing. So if you have, say, 5,000 time, uh, or 5,000 ore, you can uh, shove them into one of those bags. So yeah, do uh, give it a try to log on. Do uh, contact customer support if you have problems. Is Ettenmore still a thing? Yes, PvP, PvMP is still a thing. I believe it's available on live servers, although not legendary servers. Um, and they continue to tweak it and do work on it. In fact, I think the recent Bullroar test server was all about, or the next one uh, as well, are all about big PvMP changes coming down the line to balance, uh, I think, is a big part of that. Um, and the community has definitely expressed concerns uh, recently about, you know, will that be a thing? And apparently the answer is yes. So that's cool. Good All right. Here's where having a hunter is really useful because we're going to go from the middle of the Shire up to Evendon. Esteldon? Esteldon, the other E word. Awesome. So um, after that, we're going to get on a horse for Othorkar, and we'll be able to duck back and look at that source control. Because uh, we do want to continue taking that snapshot. 
Okay, oh, Rokar. So back to source code. We can go ahead and see. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add that. We'll want to circle back around for the other languages, but I may do that off stream. Uh, okay, so we have these three sections and really what I'm doing right here is just looking for consistency. If I added one of them one place, I should have added the other in the same place. Now, everything seems to be working, so it'd be really weird for me to have missed something, but uh, that, that's what's going on here, is I'm just giving it a once over and making sure what I change makes sense, and I only change what I meant to. Popcat says, you always love playing Lutro. Well, I am glad you have fond memories. I think you'll find that you will fit right in if you are able to get logged in. Is 10K gold still much? Uh, do you mean you had 10K gold? Well, like many MMOs, established servers tend to have economies that have uh, players getting more money than they're spending. So an auction house on a new server like Treebeard tends to have very cheap prices for things. And a more established server like Evernight, you'll pay a lot more for the same thing. Now that can be useful for new players because you find you know, a stack of copper and you sell it and now you are rich comparatively. Uh, but it doesn't mean buying those same things for your characters can be very expensive. Uh, so it, it kind of goes both ways. Uh, so it depends on what server you're on. Let's see, functions. Yep, those functions look good. That looks good. That looks good. We're here in Othrakar. All right, those settings, and there are a number of them. They look good, and those two look good. Awesome. All right. Now probably the other E word. All right. <clears throat> so, Rock and Borings is an important hub for this quest chain, and the only swift travel to Rock and Borings is from Oatburn. Uh, and you can get there from Tinder. Uh, oh, and we do need Oatburn. So, I tend to hold off Rock and Borings. We did the whole south of the Shire before. Now we're just going to dip back into it from the north using the Swift Stable Masters. Well, Topcat, there is a, a code. Get ready. Um, do make sure you uh, use the Lotro Quest 2021. Get logged in, use that code, get free stuff. It'll be permanently applied to your account, whether you play it now or in five or 10 years. Okay, we're here in Utbarton. We're just gonna go the opposite direction of the Stable Master. Talk to Haragar here. Now, some days I will spend more time reading the quest text, but here we're all about testing the acquisition of Badges of Taste, Badges of Dishonor. And I have read all these before on a, in a different life, so I don't feel too badly about skipping them right now. Topcat remembers when 100 gold was wealthy. Yes, um, it really does depend on the life of the server. Uh, right now on this server, um, I would say I have less than 100 gold across all my characters on Treebeard, and I do not feel poor. Um, uh, I feel like I can go to the auction house and buy a stack of materials if I'm if I'm short on you know leather or iron that kind of thing. But also this server is limited to level 50, so the highest you can get is tier five materials: ancient silver, ancient iron, exquisite leather, that kind of thing. You can't go up higher than that, and so there's there's a limit of the really. Uh, rare things to try to acquire in the first place. All right, Misty Mountains. So, added badges of taste and badges of dishonor. So that's our commit message for this. And now we've taken a snapshot of what the change is. Top guy says level 50 the highest. Level 50, oh no, I missed it. I must have pressed escape. 
Well, I think I'll sidestep over to Bree here. Um, level 50 is the highest on this server. Treebeard is a new legendary server that's going at a slower pace. Uh, but on live servers, the top level is 130 right now. There's been spun some speculation about whether the fate of Gundabad expansion coming out in the near future will change the level cap, but I don't know if anything's been uh, announced on that. What's the main raid on my server? Well, on this server, I think people are probably focusing on Rift and Halograd. Those are the common level 50 things. Um, let's see. Oh, I do need to go up, don't I? I'm so fast, uh, ready to go to Rivendell. But there is a dwarf up here, and this dwarf needs ale. Now, amusingly, when you're doing the epic uh, and traveling to Akkad Candlewall a lot, I really do uh, recommend if you have a hunter, don't travel to Rivendell, travel to the Misty Mountains, get on that horse, ah, oh, and don't click the wrong horse. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's see, what do I have for that? Uh, and, and maybe don't get distracted when you're talking to people. Maybe I'll just snip, uh, go over to my kin member's house and get some ingredient crates. Um, so, uh, yeah, go to uh, Misty Mountains and then nip on down to Rivendell and you're already at the Stable Master instead of going into the Hunter Port uh, and going from there. Uh, maybe I'll go to personal housing. Actually, no, this will take me to Rivendell. If I'm high enough level, I am. Uh, so yeah, Misty Mountains, uh, you're almost at the Stable Master. You're around the corner. Take the Stable Master to Rivendell. You're at the Stable Master. Uh, go on through to a Cad Candleth, and that's going to save you numerous minutes during the uh, the epic uh, when you're doing um, Shadows of Angmar, um, what, book nine, is it? Book nine, part one, two, what, uh, all of that that uh, takes you through the storyline uh, back and forth between Angmar and and uh, and Akkad Candleth and all of that storyline. Um, if you don't have milestones here, but you do have a hunter, don't don't do Rivendell travel. It's it's delightful if you're going to see Elrond. It's slow to get to the Stable Masters. Okay. Now we've only got two more, um, oh sorry, three more to do. We need to go pick up the last one from Rivendell. Topka, yes, there are new raids. Um, with each expansion, they bring out new uh, instances and new raids. And there have been many expansions since it sounds like he last played. Mugnug says, how many epic quest books are there? Um, quite a lot is the short answer. Hmm? Oh, that's true. The books. Um, uh, there are five books. Really? Five? Let's see. Let me go to my plugin manager and open up a plugin called Deed Tracker. I don't mind if I show more. Uh, and in the class series epic, let's go on down to the epic and take a look at that. All right, so epic volume one is the Shadows of Angmar. Um, and then you go into epic volume two, which is the Mines of Moria. Epic volume three, Allies of the King, which includes uh, Rohan, it looks like. Da, 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 da. Spoilers. Yep, takes you through Rohan and the Fence of uh, Helm's Deep, it looks like. And then Epic Volume 4, The Strength of Sauron, uh, looks like um, is basically finishing the story. Oops, I'm getting lost here, sorry. Uh, finishing the story of uh, taking the 
uh, the Great Alliance to the, the Black Gate of Mordor and all the things that come from that. Hmm? Fantastic. Let's see. Let's go to the Frozen North. Um, and then, of course, Epic Volume 6, the piece of Middle-earth is kind of a um, to-be-continued kind of thing. But there is, so there's four main epics plus the Black Book of Mordor, which uh, is an epic book, but it's kind of post- um, post the destruction of the ring, spoilers, um, and what happens in Mordor after that. Now there's plenty of storyline that happens after Mordor. The story travels north up into the newly renamed Mirkwood, um, Dale Lands, the Grey Mountains. There's all sorts of stuff going on up there. Okay, I should probably mount up. Angmar, that sounds delightful. Now, Angmar is one of the two places that has an emoting uh, NPC, but this NPC, it is a little bit easier to do simultaneous turn-ins. Um, so that even though it's emoting right now, she turned in first and then I turned in and we're both getting credit for that first part. So if neither of us is too fast on the second one, go on. then we both have credit for it and he's emoting. Uh, the one at Thrasy's Lodge, it feels harder to get simultaneous turn-ins turn to work like that. Um, so, all right. The final one is back to Thorin's Hall and we're good. <laughs> But like says, basically there are a lot of quests. There are a lot of quests. Um, there are tools out there that try to give an estimate of things like how many quests there are. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and follow her. Um, now deeds are a whole different thing, but we can see in this deed tracker that uh, there are 2,682 deeds that it thinks my character is capable of achieving, and it doesn't know that I've done any of them because I've, I've wiped the character data right now. Um, so just deed-wise, it thinks there's thousands of deeds that my character could do. Um, quests, I've, I'm sure there are t more, you know, tens of thousands. They have spent a lot of time, first at Turbine, now at Sending Stone Games, at delving into this world of Middle Earth and fleshing it out. And so even if you just want to ride around and ride from the Shire to Weathertop, you can do that and it's a lot of fun. And you can just follow the path of the Fellowship. You don't have to play the game. You can just go to cool places and look at things, right? Uh, and they've done a great job fleshing it out so you, it feels like you could just walk along the path the Fellowship took and see the sights and kind of immerse yourself in a 3D world that is a, a, a very lovingly made recreation of what the book tries to to set for us. So I think uh, even even putting aside the, 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 the gameplay element, the immersive aspect of it is, is particularly neat for me. All right, well, this elf standing here at this uh, ruin of a building is the final delivery. Uh, and we can see we bought ourselves up to 48 tokens. Uh, now, we, uh, I spent two of each, so that would have been 50. And I was at 39, so that's plus 11, minus two, plus nine. Uh, so all the tracking here is great. We can confirm the behavior of Titan Bar with the new currencies for badges of taste and badges of dishonor. And let's go ahead and double check that the reputation is on track too. This is a change from last week, but we do wanna make sure it works. Ale Association, 6,100, awesome. And in League, 8,700, perfect. So. Um, reputation gains and losses are doing great, and these new currencies are doing great. <clears throat> so, I think these are good to ship out as a patch. So, how do we do a patch? That's an excellent question. I think I'm gonna head, yeah, I think I'm gonna take a ride back to Bree with Rosenblum, and then step off to the side of the path somewhere, and we'll go ahead and look at making the patch for uh, Titan Bar.
Okay, so first things first, we wanna go ahead and remember to, um, we wanna go ahead and remember to adjust the Titan Bars plugin, uh, dot plugin file, uh, because we wanna bump that version. I'm gonna add a point one at the end here, uh, just to indicate that this is a patch on this specific version. Uh, so if they um, their release is 135.25, awesome. Hopefully that will replace this, the need for this patch, but at the very least, this patch should not be applied to that version. Same thing with the plugin compendium. We'll go ahead and just edit that right here, just so um, we're playing nicely there. Awesome. Um, at that point, what it can be very useful to do is have a copy of the original. So on Titan Bar, Duriel, we're gonna come on in here. We're gonna go ahead and download that. It comes down as a zip file. Awesome. Uh, it is nice to go ahead and uh, again, uh, be consistent. And so they're using a zip file. I'm gonna use a zip file, which is my preferred method. All right, we're gonna go ahead and extract that. While we're doing that, we'll go ahead and take a snapshot of this version bump. Add version bump. Excellent. Okay, so we have an extracted version of this. This is important because when you do a patch, you want to only include the files that changed. Now we do actually know which files changed because we've been taking snapshots, but just in case, here's how we would do it. So we have the original uh, version that's out there, and we have our version. And we can use a file comparison utility like Beyond Compare is my personal favorite, and it will tell us each of the files that is different. These are the files that we want to include in the patch, and only these files. All right, well, that should, uh, should be pretty easy. Let's go ahead and I need more space on my uh, screen is what I need. Let's go ahead and go to my documents where I have plugin along releases. And in here, we can go ahead and make a new folder for Titan bar. Uh, well, I just had that version and I closed the window. All right, Titan bar, that one. But we're gonna remember to use the dot one. Okay. Now in here, we're going to use that list of differences to populate things here. So the first thing we do need is the Havna plugins folder. And then we can start uh, picking through. We would need the plugin and the plugin compendium. Awesome. Copy those over. And we need the folder Titan Bar. All right, now we can go on in. We need these uh, specific files. Well, that's easy enough. We need background. We need uh, form main, we need form options, we need functions, functions control, functions menu, functions menu control. Uh, we also need main and settings and TV resources. Awesome, copy those over. <laughs> Why not? We also need locale. Excellent. From there, we just need the EN file for now. What I'll probably do is show the process of uploading this and then come back in and update it with the uh, French and German um, later today, maybe tomorrow. Or some other uh, kind German or French person will uh, submit that and they'll be like, hey, here's what it is. And then I won't have to uh, kind of fudge that. All right. So we have locale done. We have these files. And finally, we need the control files. 
We have the two new Badge of Taste and Badge of Dishonor, and the Wallet Tooltip Wallet Window. All right. So ideally, we should have those four. Awesome. One in locale. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten here. Yep. And the two out here. There we go. So that's the minimum set we need for a patch. Okay. So the other thing we need is a zip file for that. So we can make a new zip file. We want to call it the same thing, really. I should probably archive off some of these other things. Uh, and in to that zip file, we don't place the core file, uh, the the outside folder with the version. We want Habna plugins to come in here because when this zip file is expanded, it needs to dump Habna plugins out first. Okay, so we have the zip file, Titan bar 135.24.1. We come in here and we see Habna plugins. We come in here, we see this stuff, awesome. If we open up that titanbar.plugin file, we see the 135.24.1, awesome, that's got the change we want. You know, I'm noticing as I'm flipping windows around, I never did make this currency window a little bit taller. Uh, things I forget until the last minute. Let's go take a look at that real fast, see how much it uh, will hurt to fix. So the very first thing we see is let's see scroll bar. All right, there should be a scroll bar somewhere. Is this wallet window the right thing? Let's actually go back to locale uh, and open up that English file because we want to see right click a currency to get its setting. Awesome. So we want to see that in here. Okay, excellent. Set text. So this is a window that has that text. We're probably in the right place. Cool. Um, what do we have? Filter label. Oh, um, yeah, for the searching. Nice. That was a recent feature, I think. And we have the list box. We have a scroll bar whose parent should be the list box. So why it does this not scroll? That is a question. Now, am I looking at the right thing? Um, well, you know, they have a debug thing here for a reason. Let's go ahead and reload this. Now, we can pop this open. Okay, so we do see that is the correct box. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, so, we have a scroll bar. Its parent is list box. It's a vertical scroll bar. And we're setting these a vertical scroll bar of list box to this. The position is being set based off of this thing's width. Um, okay. And the size is being set to its height. So that all looks pretty plausible. The real question is, are those values correct? <laughs> um, let's, let's scroll through here a little bit. I'm wondering if that's the wrong place for it to be added. Uh, so for instance, if I do a turbine.shell.writeline just to uh, write out some stuff, list box height uh, width, and we can just do wi list box get width, and then height wi list box get height. Let's just take a look at those values. So we've reloaded, we'll pop back in here, list box width, with uh, and the height, those actually look pretty good. So if I um, just do a quick little snipping of this area. Uh, 
Um, my, my real question is, how many pixels is this more or less? Um, we see 250, that, yeah, okay. So those numbers look correct. So the scroll bar should be in the correct spot. Um, so why isn't it? What, what am I missing here? Scroll bars are one of those things where I just, uh, I get them working and then I just sort of put them aside because I don't really feel like I have an, a good intuitive sense of them, but I do use them a little bit in the D tracker, um, mostly with stuff inspired by a previous plugin. So if I come into the main win, and let's take a look at uh, how that scroll bar works. Although that is for a, a tree and not for a list box. So we have the scroll bar, set parent. Oh yeah. Let me find a different scroll bar, an embedded scroll bar. Okay. Oh, that didn't uh, tell me much of anything. Um, let's come into the documentation, a place I should be sooner than now. So we're using a turbine.ui.list box. I've heard very good things. I haven't used it very much. Set vertical scroll bar. I mean, that does seem like that would do it. Hmm. So there should be a scroll bar here already. That's the thing that confuses me. Although, you know, when we did this thing red and we said reload, I wonder what the, if the size of this thing is going beyond the height. Let's, let's artificially constrain it even more. Because if the size of it is bigger than the window, it won't be drawn, but it'll still contain stuff. And that, uh, that may not be triggering the scroll bar. There we go. The math, the math for that was off. Okay, the location of that tick versus that tick is weird. Okay, so what's going on here? What's what's the math? Why are we seeing minus 95? Oh, 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 oh. When he added the search recently, I don't, I, because this is a magic number, there was nothing to say, oh, I need to also subtract that from this down here. Uh, now, uh, no shame on Doriel, uh, that magic number could have been here forever, but magic numbers uh, are a problem. They're just sitting there and you don't know why they're there. Uh, and so we have um, let's see, so size. So if we were to say local um, that height equals 35, I don't like that naming scheme, but we're just going to be a little consistent here. Uh, and if we were to say uh, local, again, label uh, height equals size 20. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then we could say at least minus 95 minus um in fact we could go ahead and have another local local this height equals and we can go ahead and start with that and we can also say minus that height minus uh, this height isn't the only way to do this. We could also go get the height of those uh, elements after they're drawn. This is just a way to do it. 
And then that height here, substituted in, let's not do the math in place. And then now we are taking into account that the search box has pushed us down beyond the bottom of the window. In fact, I'm not sure why the window is that tall in the first place. It doesn't uh, need to be with a scroll bar, but that's okay. Uh, let's check that out. Oh, very nice. Okay. So, um, scroll bar was already good there, awesome. But the magic numbers tripped up the uh, the plugin developer, and they just didn't realize that um, they needed to account for that uh, in that minus ninety five, which is probably just the number of pixels um, in uh, uh, the border plus that label there. Okay, um, so we do want to go ahead and get rid of that debug color. Um, I think it's this one, but uh, that's why we have source control. We can come on in here and say that this right here, that one for debug purposes, we'll go ahead and discard that change. Yeah, but the rest of this, this is good. Okay, so we'll go ahead and reload this for a final check. Excellent, that scroll bar is in place. That's gonna be very nice. Okay, um, so we'll hold on to that thought for a minute. Excellent, so that was the to-do, adjust the size or make it scrollable. It was already scrollable, done, great. Okay, fixed height of a list box, so scroll are wood up here. Neat. Now these uh, commit messages, these snapshot messages, are really useful when it comes time to making a patch notes. Like, what did we change? Uh, we'll just be able to uh, copy, copy, uh, and done. So that being said, uh, we did just change another function, uh, another file, the wallet window. So we're going to want to come back in and uh, put that into the zip file. Okay, so Titan bar control, and we're going to be grabbing that from. The, the live folder where we've been looking at that, and that was the, what was it? Wallet window, excellent. Copy that over. Yep, I wanna replace that. Excellent. So, we can go ahead and copy this into the zip file, excellent. And let's upload it real fast before I have to log off and go be unconscious in the sleeping variety. Okay, so when you are looking at a plugin like Titan Bar on Lotro Interface, you will, uh, it's only ominous if you don't like being unconscious. Okay, you will see a link here, upload patch, upload add-on, or you will not. When you upload a plugin, you have the option to opt in to community patches or not. Uh, I can't, currently understand why you would opt out of that, but there might be reasons. Uh, but in any case, fortunately, Titan Bar has not. So we're gonna go ahead and upload a patch. We're gonna choose that file that we've just put together. It's gonna be in the uh, plugin along releases. We're looking at Titan Bar. Excellent, I'm gonna pull that version number because I'm gonna need that in a minute. Manage images. Um, I don't have any images, but um, let's see, I do want to go back and have this open for reference. That's going to be, uh, that's going to be nice. I wonder, do I need the V inversion? Let's go ahead and add it. Okay, so the interface title, um, this is just going to be uh, 
uh, Titan bar version that patch uh, for minor fixes, uh, badges of taste and is on. Excellent. Actually, minor fixes, why not just say for reputation losses, badges of taste and dishonor. Lovely. Now, when you're doing a description like this, it's very nice to be able to steal from an existing one. So if it's your very first one, maybe, uh, maybe get some uh, help from an existing interface that you like that you want to use. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to go to my minstrel buffs with out of combat timer and just hit the edit button and snag that. Since this is a patch on the minstrel buffs uh, plugin, which is delightful, we're going to paste that in and we'll just edit it for our purposes. All right, so this is, um, here we go. Da -da -da. Titan bar. It's a great interface for showing the specific pieces of information in a small space. This patch fixes how reputation losses. No. This patch. Let's tighten bar detect reputation losses and add badges of taste and dishonor as currency. As currencies. I suppose it also um, does. Yeah, um, I don't think we need to call about that scroll bar thing. Okay, installation and setup. And that's what the real part that I wanted to copy from before. First, you need to install a thing. Now, again, I'm just copy pasting over there. Titan bar version 1.35.24. This patch only includes necessary changes to update that plugin. And the uh, Lotro plugin compendium is delightful, of course. What is it? Habna plugins? Habna plugins. Okay, um, when the plugin manager is find Titan bar in the list on the left, verify the version is 135.24.1. Then you have not properly installed. And we don't have an update yet, but okay. Quick blah, 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 blah. History, and then we'll just do a quick little history. Initial release. And I don't have any uh, form notes to put there. Okay. Um, well, that seems good. We'll go back in and fix any typos after the fact. Rules and guidelines. Remember to read these rules and guidelines at least once thoroughly before you start uploading to the Lotro interface. They are important. So, must attach a zip file. Um, do you want pictures when required? But I think we'll be okay with that one. Um, uh, all of this is important. We have read and uh, understood and agree at least once. Excellent. So we've uploaded a file. I've uh, declined to do an image. I don't think that'll be very helpful here. We have a uh, description and upload. Your file's been uploaded. It's a very small file when it's only a patch. Okay. The standard disclaimer, it may take a while, they might delete it, they might not tell you why, but it's always nice to hope. List my interfaces, and we can see that this is pending um, the upload process. And all right, that's how to submit a patch on something like Titan Bar. We made some changes, we tested those changes, we packaged up just the files that did change, and then we shipped it out as a zip file to load to our interface um, by clicking uh, 
the upload patch button. Uh, this is not a new pl uh, plugin. This is a patch on an existing plugin. Uh, by doing that, we've tied them together so that once it's uploaded, uh, or now, now that it is, when I look at the Titan Bar page, we can see that this patch is linked there uh, right now. Uh, and the, uh, the maintainer, Duriel, may very well get an email saying someone submitted a patch. And now they'll know that they can come and look at that code and see if they want to incorporate it into uh, the main code base. And hopefully they do. Okay, so um, that is a whirlwind tour of submitting a patch and hopefully uh, made some sort of sense. Do let me know if you have any questions on anything we've covered today. I think we're going to start wrapping it up. So uh, I'm going to glance at chat while I get a glass of water or a drink of water and see what you all have to say. Mike Mike says, nice, that was cool. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, I really do enjoy using plugins in Lotro, and so it's, it, uh, I really am glad when I get a chance to come in and uh, tweak an existing plugin, make, it, make a fix. Uh, hopefully it goes into the main line, but at least other people can use the patch uh, and have that slightly improved uh, experience that I'm having. And having those badges of taste and badges of dishonor on my Titan bar is just going to be so nice as I try to get make sure I have just as many fall festival tokens as I need for all of the cool things available this uh, festival. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. Do make sure to, um, it is it is the last Tuesday of the month, so uh, don't forget to tune in for Shoreless Skies Beneath Your Feet at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, this is the once a month uh, Tuesday that they are on. Magnog says, are you a programmer by trade? Yes, that is my day job. I'm a software engineer. Uh, I'm more on the C-sharp side of things and less on the Lua side of things, but... Uh, uh, it comes in handy when it comes to thinking about how a plugin is working with the game and thinking about what things are maybe more possible or less possible. And definitely when it comes to looking at an existing plugin like Titan Bar and trying to make sense of what's happening and why in the code. Uh, reading someone else's code is, is, is a skill and it takes a lot of practice to work out, which is one of the reasons I really like doing it with something like Titan Bar. Um, which has had so many hands over the years, but you can still see that consistent style uh, where people have, have uh, maintained a sort of a single voice. Uh, and it's, it takes practice to read that code. It takes practice to figure out what's going on. We did a whole hour or two last week uh, just trying to figure out how the reputation calculator was doing things because uh, I was not used to reading that particular part of code. And so the variables um, were confusing. They were confusingly named and how they were being used was confusing. And uh, going through that, that exercise was really valuable for me as a programmer because, uh, yeah, it's, it's incredibly hard to read other people's code. It's incredibly hard to read my own code that is more than like a few months old. Uh, other people's code is just that much harder. Uh, so it's a good practice. <laughs> so as a programmer by accident, excellent. Now, a long ago, I realized that I really enjoy sitting in front of computers and working with them. And uh, fortunately, I was able to convert that into a day job. <laughs> OK, uh, awesome. Thank you for that question. Thank you all for being here and joining me on this exploration of Lutro plugins. I think that's all we're going to cover. Uh, I do hope to see you next week. Uh, until then, keep plugging along. All right, bye-bye now.